Hello, everyone. My name is Jackie, and I'm coming to you from Heights Libraries. Today, we are um, going to have a Tech Talk program. And for today's program, we're going to be talking about smart home devices. So I'm just going to give it a quick minute here, and then we can get started. So thank you for joining uh, me today. My coworker Ann and I, we have been coming to you since last April um, every week, either with a Tech Talk program, which discusses a timely topical uh, tech topic, or an Appy Hour program. And in the Appy Hour programs, we uh, discuss different apps, uh, generally, or you know, always on a theme. So we've done lots of different Appy Hours, lots of different Tech Talks, um, and they are archived on YouTube and Facebook, so you can see past um, Appy Hour and Tech Talk programs on the library's uh, Facebook and YouTube pages. For today, my coworker Anne is moderating, so she's keeping an eye on the comments here. And if you have any questions or comments as we go along, go ahead and put them in the comment box uh, below the window that you're watching, and she will answer them. If I see one pop up, I may uh, verbally uh, touch on it as well in the So again, um, I already said, um, but if you are just joining, my name is Jackie and I am the tech librarian at Heights Libraries. And today we are uh, Tech Talk and it is uh, smart home devices. So we will get started with that. So to start off with, um, I will ask what is a smart device? And there's a lot of different definitions out there, varying in complexity, but uh, just sticking to basics here, I will say it's in any appliance or fixture used in the home or office or in the world, your life, that one, requires an internet connection to function, and two, is generally controlled by an app. So requires an internet connection, is controlled by an app. Um, and as we go along here, we'll talk more about this. Smart devices are just, they're widely available at this point. They're um, used for a wide variety of needs and uses. You may already be using a smart device in your life and realize it, not realize it. Um, but I could just go off of a very big list of smart devices at this point. If you have a smartphone, you have a smart device. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, all those uh, smart watches and fitness watches, those are smart devices. Like I said, your smartphone, there's lots of different uh, fixtures and appliances out there, such as smart plugs and light bulbs and sensors. Uh, there are also like home security systems, cameras, doorbells. We get into appliances. There's smart TVs, thermostats, speakers, fridges, washing machines. Like I said, I could go on and on with all the smart devices that are out there. And if you're thinking again, washing machine, what is she talking about it being a smart device? Think back to our definition here. Um, that washing machine, if it's a smart device, is connected to the internet and it has the option to have an app on like your phone or tablet so you can monitor usage you could see at what point in a wash like your washing machine is at you could start a load from your washing machine um, it still requires you to put the clothes in the washing machine but you could start the wash from your from your phone so hopefully that gives you an idea here of what I'm talking about it's a broad topic at this point, lots of different options to consider if you want to start using smart devices. Like I already said in the previous slide, I'll just say it again, you do need an internet connection for smart devices to function. 
this would be Wi-Fi generally in your home. So you have a stable Wi-Fi connection in your home. You know, you're paying for it. That's readily available. That will help you have full functionality of a smart device. Without Wi-Fi, like your devices may allow limited functionality, like check before you buy a smart lock. But, you, you know, hopefully a smart lock would have a way that you can unlock it if your internet is down or something along those lines or your electricity is down. So, uh, but generally for full functionality, you do need that Wi-Fi internet connection at home. The other part of our definition here was that these uh, smart devices use apps. And as we go along here, uh, we'll talk about different smart devices, but all of them essentially are gonna use apps. And you will find those apps by going to the store on your phone or your tablet. If you're on an Apple device, like an iPad or an iPhone, you will go to the Apple App Store and find the app that you need. If you're on uh, like an Android device, you will go to the Google Play Store and find the app that you need. Uh, you may be thinking, well, what is she talking about? Well, if you buy like a smart thermostat and its brand is Honeywell, in the instructions, you will probably see that they have an app, like a Honeywell um, home app or something along those lines. So that's what you would want to look for in your, you know, your in the in the app store on your device. Now, the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store, that's there automatically when you get your device. So it's just, it's already there. You can go in there and download these apps. And generally, these apps are free because you've already paid for the device. So they're free to download and use. All right. So pros of smart devices. One that I did not put on here, but I will mention is at this point, smart devices are widely available, as I already said, and they're at affordable price points. Yes, you can find you know more expensive smart devices, but in general, you can find smart devices that are within your price range, um, affordable prices widely available. So I'd say that's a pro. This is not, we're getting into the point here where it's not fresh technology that costs tons and tons of money. I will also say that in this discussion, I am talking in a broad context. So I'm talking about smart devices overall and different categories of smart devices. I'm, I'm not here to like recommend a brand to you specifically or yes, you need to go with this type of smart device. So just keep that in mind as I go along. You might see a brand on a picture or something along those lines. It's an example. If you are interested in buying a certain type of smart device, that research component is up to you. You could um, also always contact us tech trainers at the library and we could give you, you know, some more information in the form of articles and things like that. So continuing here with pros of smart devices. One big pro is just the remote access um, aspect of smart devices. You could, from your phone, change your house temperature, whether you're upstairs in your house or if you're across town, you could change the temperature in your house or see what the temperature in your house is. You could see uh, security camera footage live if you had one of those installed from your phone. So that remote access um, is a great pro of smart devices. Another one here is energy savings. There's lots of different ways that smart devices can help with energy savings, whether it's you're using smart, smart light bulbs that you're programming to be on and off at certain hours, or maybe a smart thermostat, or like a smart water meter, or those sort of things. Those can all help with energy savings. Another thing here is convenience. Um, they are just convenient. There's a lot of aspects to this. Um, like I said, one of them is like you could change your house temperature. That was an example I just gave. Um, start a load of laundry remotely. Um, you can automate things such as the porch light comes on during certain hours at your house. Um, lock doors or close the garage from your phone or check that things are locked or unlocked in your house. 
So lots of convenience factors here, uh, streamlining your life a little bit, which gets into the automation part of this. Um, you can really automate multiple smart devices. You know, you can connect multiple smart devices to your home speaker. So you could say, Alexa, turn up the heat two degrees uh, from your couch. Um, the other thing here is uh, there is a program called If This Then That. And what this provides to you is applets, which are basically little programs they can complete specific tasks. So if this, then that is connected to your smart device, and it allows you to automate certain tasks in your, in your life. Like you could set up an applet so your front door locks when you leave your home Wi-Fi network. So it can tell, you know, you have your phone with you, you go for a walk, you walk down the street, it'll automatically lock your front door. Um, other things, like if you added a reminder on Alexa, you could set up an applet so that that reminder will automatically also be added to the Reminders app on your phone. So those are just a couple examples of this, then, then that applets. That gets a, a little bit into the more, you know, advanced realm of um, using smart devices you know, the automation aspect of it. And that's certainly not the place to start, I would say. Um, I'm always an advocate of just starting simple. So in terms of starting simple, like you're like, yes, I want to start using smart technology. Good, you know, place to start is maybe with something you already own. You own a smartphone or you own a tablet start trying to use the virtual assistant on your smartphone or tablet. If you have an Android uh, device, that is going to be your Google Assistant. If you have an Apple device, that is going to be Siri. So uh, you could start using a virtual assistant, you know, learning how to use that on a device you already own. You could also buy a speaker, so a smart speaker. Uh, that's an example on the right-hand side of the screen. And again, they're sold by different companies, different brands. There are Google speakers. The Alexa is an Amazon product. Um, there's, a, there's a number of them out there. And that's also a virtual assistant, though. So, And with virtual assistants, you're asking it to complete tasks, like turn on music or text mom, uh, check the weather, find directions, you know, do internet searches. These are all things that virtual assistants can do for you. Um, I will note one thing that is not currently really possible or streamlined with virtual assistants is um, calling 911. So you can't really say, hey Siri, call 911, we have an emergency. Doesn't work, um, so I'll give you a heads up on that. All right. So I will go into some specific categories of smart devices. First one is uh, smart thermostats. So these are available and under a number of brands. The one here is the Nest and that you know was one of the first out and became very popular, but certainly do your research, look at different options, because there's a lot of great options out there for smart thermostats at this point. So this would be replacing your current thermostat in your home, and the advantages here are energy savings, because you can set a schedule for your thermostat. Um, you know, it can cool down at night, um, and then heat up at a certain time in the morning when you're getting up, that sort of thing, or it can be on low... Uh, a lower temperature when you're not home during the day, and then be scheduled to, you know, rise in temperature near when you're getting home for the day, those sorts of things. <clears throat> Another thing about smart thermostats is you can change the temperature remotely, so that could be useful if you need to do that. Uh, you know, that could be for a variety of reasons. You could be upstairs and just be like, it's chilly, let me uh, turn up the temperature. Or it could be you're on vacation and, you know, you're realizing that it's gotten really cold at home and you don't want to completely uh, freeze your pets to death. So 
you decide to turn up the thermostat from your Bermuda vacation whenever we get back to being able to do those. Um, another one is tracking energy usage. So that's a great reason to use a smart thermostat. And um, with that, you know, you're, it, the thermostat's collecting data, so you would be able to look back on the data in the app and see your energy usage, see the averages for, you know, outdoor temperature and, you know, indoor temperature. So that could be useful information for you as well. Uh, you know, maybe see how efficiently your furnace is running. That might give you some insights. Another thing, too, is uh, some smart thermostats have sensors that come with them, and these are usually... Um, you know, like small cubes, um, and you can put them in different rooms in your house. Uh, that could be helpful because you could have them in different areas of your house, maybe one in an upstairs bedroom and one downstairs, and the smart thermostat will take information from both of those sensors and try to even out, like, regulate the temperature in your home so you don't have one area that's very cold and one area that's really warm. So that's kind of a a nice feature too of some of these smart thermostats is the sensors. Another area that's become very big with smart devices is security devices. So with security devices, we're talking about home security systems, indoor, outdoor cameras, sensors, sensors in with security devices. Um, you could set them on anything, like you could set a sensor on a door so you would get a notification that um, a door has been opened, um, those sorts of things. Like, um, So that's what you could use sensors for. You could use them for other things in your house, too. I mean, you could put a sensor on your fridge if you wanted to, if you wanted to get a notification that the fridge is being opened or closed or, you know, just you, let your imagination run wild. You can monitor anything you want in your home at this point. Um, smart doorbells, uh, these will generally have cameras attached to them as well. Uh, locks, so smart locks, um, again, it gives you that ability to lock and unlock your door remotely. Um, some of them have keypads and just the regular key lock on them as well. Uh, smoke and CO detectors, those could be very nice to have a smart device for those. You may get an alert that the battery is low or get an alert that the smoke detector has gone off in your home, uh, things like that. So um, smoke and CO detectors as well are great smart devices. Another uh, category here is electrical and appliances. So we're talking about smart plugs and light bulbs and light switches, home appliances I've already talked about. You could have a smart washer or a smart dryer. Um, TVs, your fridge, you know, the options are limitless here. Um, a smart TV, you may be saying like, okay, yeah, I bought one of those, but why is it called a smart TV? Again, think back to our definition of that smart TV is connected to the internet, so it has greater capability than, you know, a, a previous TV set that you owned. Um, you, you can have apps on that TV, like the Netflix app directly, or maybe the Amazon Prime app directly. Or if you're using a device like a Roku, you could have that directly on your smart TV. Um, it just gives you the ability to connect to the internet and more functionality that comes with that, more features. Uh, another category here is speakers and displays. I already talked about speakers. Uh, displays, you can see in the bottom of this slide, is a small example. But th the smart displays, they kind of look like tablets. Um, so they're sort of a tablet, and they have that virtual assistant built into them. So that could be something that, you know, you keep on your kitchen counter, and you look up recipes, and the recipe will show up, you know, on your smart display. You could use it, you know, to check the weather. You walk into the kitchen this morning, say, what's the weather? And it'll pop up on that screen. So that's what a smart display is. So those were um, several categories of smart devices. I, I could I could just keep talking because there are so many different options um, and categories of smart devices, but I think those are some that have become popular, might be of interest to you. So those are the ones we discussed. Now I will discuss some cons of smart devices. So the biggest one here is 
privacy. If you have a smart device in your home, there is some level of privacy that you, I guess, are sacrificing or giving up. Um, smart speakers, the smart displays, um, the virtual assistants, even your phone, it's always listening to you. If you have the speaker on, it is always listening to you. Um, you know, with a virtual assistant or your phone, you do have to say a wake word. So, hey Siri, okay Google. You do have to say one of those wake words, like Alexa. Those are just three examples. But in order for your device to hear that wake word, the microphone is on and is always listening. So just something to keep in mind that if you have an Alexa speaker sitting in your living room, the, the microphone is on, it is always listening. It's waiting to hear that wake word, that Alexa play music or whatever command you're going to give it. On all of these um, virtual assistant like speakers, there is an on off button, a physical on off button. Uh, so you could, you know, intentionally turn the microphone off. If you don't, it's on the device is listening. With a smartphone, you can go into settings and you can choose that the speaker will not be on unless you turn it on. Sorry, the microphone will not be on. Um, that does take away some convenience because you can't say, hey Siri, and then ask it, you know, what is the weather? You would have to activate Siri in some other way, like press a microphone button on your, on your device or things along those lines. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, you know, and there have been some like cases of weird things happening with these smart speakers, your smartphones. If you own a smartphone, you may have had an instance where the smartphone just wakes up and it's um, Siri is or Google is answering uh, some question, which was a snippet of something you just said to your family member. So that's an example. And it's because to your device, it did hear the wake word and it responded to it. Whether you actually said that word or not, you know, it's debatable depending on the situation. Uh, there have also been like instances where people realize like that your smart speaker has completed a task for you. Like by mistake, it emailed part of a conversation you were having to someone in your email contacts. So just know there's that privacy component there. Um, and you know, these smart devices, they're machines. They don't have the nuance of language. They don't really have a brain. They don't have the human thinking uh, capability that we have. They have a lot of capability, but they don't have that. So just keep that in mind when you're using one. Um, some people are okay with this kind of privacy concern. They really think that, you know, the convenience outweighs any privacy issue. Um, that's up to you just to decide where your comfort level lies with it. Uh, another kind of aspect of this privacy issue is that the apps are collecting data. Um, and this is, you know, even if you're using nothing else but your smartphone, every app you have on your smartphone or maybe a tablet is collecting data about you in some fashion, like your use of the app or the information you're putting into the app. So keep in mind all these smart devices will be using an app. Um, one thing you can do is read all the privacy agreements so you can understand what is being done with your data. Again, this is personal comfort level. You may not care that um, the information on your house temperature and humidity is being collected by this app. You, however, might uh, care that your health information is being collected by a smartwatch. So just things to consider here, um, you know, where you lie on the privacy concern spectrum. Like many things, it's subjective. It is entirely up to your own comfort level, but just giving you that information about the privacy concerns with smart devices. So the other con I thought of was that there is limited function, uh, functionality, and I already touched on this, but smart devices rely on an internet connection. 
um, and they are controlled from an app. So if your power or the internet is down at your house, you're going to have more limited functionality. That smart device is not going to be ha working uh, completely. It will be limited in some way. Like, you won't be able to use the app to open your front door, but maybe you can still use a key. That sort of thing. Another thing, too, is, like, if you are away and maybe you have someone coming into the house, uh, they may have to do certain things manually. Like, if you have smart light bulbs... They don't have the app to control those, or they may not know how to use your smart speaker to turn them on and off, so they may have to manually, you know, turn on a light or things like that. So just some things to keep in mind there with um, it requiring an app, requiring an internet connection, is without those things, its functionality will be greatly lessened. All right, so... The last thing I wanted to mention here is that um, there are some great resources out there. As I mentioned before, if you're not using, you know, intentionally using smart devices right now and you want to start, start simple. Start trying to use the virtual assistant on your phone. Maybe a smart speaker. Maybe something like smart light bulbs in your house so you can turn them on and off with your smart speaker or from your phone. You could even program lights like indoor and outdoor lights uh, to come on at certain times. So those are kind of great places to start. Another great thing to do is um, do some research, do some reading, and there's some great resources out there. Uh, one is CNET. They've got tons of reviews and articles on smart devices. Wirecutter as well from the New York Times. PC Magazine. Uh, dot com. Those three are all websites. Consumer Reports as well. It, it's a magazine, but it's also a website. Consumer Reports is subscription-based, so generally you have to pay for it. But um, it is a free uh, subscription from the library. So you can um, find it online by going starting at heightslibrary.org to access it. It is under our databases pages. Um, so you can get consumer reports for free to research smart devices, which is very nice. I've done that myself. Um, so as I said here, I'm not recommending you go one direction or the other with smart devices. It's entirely up to you in terms of researching brands too. There's a lot of choices out there, uh, different features. So I leave that up to you to do some research and these are some great places to access information about different types of smart devices and how you might use them. And um, that's it. I am just going to look here to see if we've gotten any questions in the comment box. I'm not seeing any questions and did introduce herself here. But um, as we're wrapping up here, if anyone has any questions, uh, just Put them in that comment box and Anne will answer them. But otherwise, thank you guys for joining today. And I hope that this session, this tech talk was useful to you and that you learned something about smart homes and smart tech devices. It was fun to put this uh, presentation together um, and learn a little bit about smart devices uh, myself, learn a bit more. I do use them in my personal life, but... Um, you know, definitely learn some things here, uh, putting this together for you guys. But I'll give it another minute, some questions, and then I will get off. And I hope you have a good rest of your week. All right, so I am going to go ahead and, ahead and end things here. Even once I end the live video, you can leave questions and comments in the comment box. Uh, we'll see them. We will respond to you, get an answer to you. Remember that this session will be archived. You should see it pr pretty quickly on the library's Facebook page if you want to listen back to it. Uh, they do eventually, these presentations make their way to the library's YouTube page as well if you want to find it there. So thank you everyone for joining and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye.